When a French journalist asked the Nigerian writer Chimamanda Adichie during a recent interview whether there were any bookstores in Nigeria, she could not have envisaged the uproar that it would generate. And do people read your books in Nigeria? They do, shockingly. Are there bookshops in Nigeria? Je vois, je vois, je vois. You know, I think... <laughs> I, think it's, I think it reflects very poorly on French people that you have to ask me that question. Most Nigerians consider the question outrageous, condescending, and generally ignorant. Hardly surprising, bearing in mind that Nigeria has produced a healthy number of great writers over the years, including not just Adichie, but Nobel laureate Wole Shoinka, Chinua Achebe, Cyprien Ekwensi, Flora Nwapa, and Buchi Emecheta, to name a few. It should be pointed out, though, that one reason for the mass negative reactions by Nigerians is that such questions serve to remind them of their own nation's failing, which they experience daily. To have an outsider draw attention to that before an international audience is considered an unpardonable embarrassment. But outrage aside, the question offers an opportunity to raise the wider issue of what the situation really looks like when it comes to accessibility of books for millions of children and students in Africa's most populous country. The Tertiary Education Trust Fund is working to change the situation through the Technical Advisory Group activities on higher education, book development, and the National Research Fund. These are the chronicles of the journey to institutionalize research and development in Nigeria. Hello and welcome to this edition of TED Fund, The Paradigm Shift. I am Stanley Bentu. The atmosphere was jubilant on a warm November afternoon at the Transcore Hilton when the chairman of the TED Fund Board of Trustees, Al Haji Kashib Ibrahim Imam, inaugurated two crucial committees that contribute immensely to the concept of research and development. The committees are the TED Fund National Research Fund Screening and Monitoring Committee, NRFS and MC, and the Technical Advisory Group, TAG. Now, before we delve into the details of what was said and done on this grand occasion, it's important to understand first and foremost why the challenge to produce more textbooks for teaching and learning is important. And it is one challenge that must be met and overcome. Take a look at this. In the 1980s Nigeria, there were numerous functioning public libraries where students and scholars could access books for free. Those days hold a lot of positive and vibrant literary memories. Back then, before the satellite television era in Nigeria, books were the main form of entertainment. Public tertiary institutions had rich libraries, and there were also well-stocked public libraries, as well as subsidized bookstores where parents often purchased cheap books for their children or words on weekends out. Today, the situation is very different. Over the years, we have witnessed firsthand the demise of accessibility to books. School libraries are sparse, and the public libraries are shadows of what they used to be. In a country where roughly two-thirds of the population live in poverty, most parents struggle to feed their children, let alone buy them books. The libraries that do exist are often populated with foreign textbooks, which may not be suitable for giving the Nigerian scholar education that is grounded in his or her national realities or relevant to the local economy. This is why TED Fund is making huge investments in ensuring the Nigerian students have textbooks authored by professional Nigerian academics. Textbooks that are produced to meet the unique needs of educators at educational institutions. The Department of Education Support Services was created to manage and implement academic content-based intervention programs of TED Fund for public tertiary institutions in the country. 
These are essentially non-infrastructural intervention programs which focus on capacity building for human development on the one hand and intellectual materials development in our public tertiary institutions on the other hand. A technical advisory group activities on higher education book development, or TAG for short, is one of three divisions in the department, the other two being the Library Development Division and the Academic Manuscripts to Book Division. TAG's main objective is to facilitate the implementation of the Higher Education Book Development Program. The membership of TAG is drawn from universities with each of the six geopolitical zones adequately represented, National Universities Commission, the National Board for Technical Education, the National Commission for Colleges of Education, Academic Staff Union of Universities, Academic Staff Union of Polytechnics, Colleges of Education, Academic Staff Union, and representatives of the print media. The activities of TAG are aimed at encouraging local production of higher education books by indigenous authors for national and international consumption. TAG is essential to the paradigm shift of TETFUND as it is one of the organs that contribute to the elevation of the content component which will ultimately lead Nigeria to a knowledge-based economy. Well, now that we understand the purpose of TAG, let us explore the second committee, TED Fund's National Research Fund Screening and Monitoring Committee, the NRFS and MC. The federal government, through TED Fund, approves and releases funds for research. And in recent years, these funds have grown exponentially. But how are these funds disbursed? Who do they go to? Why do they go to who they go to? This next report will make the picture crystal clear. The TET Fund National Research Fund program was introduced in 2009 as a special intervention approved by the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The program is aimed at promoting the conduct of applied research and innovation by academics in public tertiary educational institutions. The main objective is to drive the socio-economic development of Nigeria in an increasingly globalized and highly competitive knowledge-driven world economy. To actualize the objectives of the National Research Fund, the Board of Trustees set up a committee tagged the NRF Screening and Monitoring Committee and charged it with the responsibility for implementing the intervention. After extensive consultations with experts and various stakeholders, the blueprint for rollout of the National Research Fund was produced. The blueprint mirrors Nigeria's national research agenda, depicting the prioritized areas of research in academia. Lecturers in any of our public universities, polytechnics and colleges of education in Nigeria are eligible to apply for research funding. Multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary research projects comprising researchers from various disciplines are most highly encouraged. The principal investigator or PI, who must preferably be of professorial cater in a university, chief lecturer in a polytechnic or college of education, will lead the research team and be personally responsible and held accountable for the conduct of the research. An added requirement is that the PI must be institution-based, with the PI's institution regarded as the coordinating institution. However, additional members of the research team can be drawn from researchers in private tertiary institutions, research institutes, centers of excellence, and industry. This is consistent with the global best practice of involving non-governmental organizations and other non-state actors in research projects that are to address national needs. The process of application is entirely on an online platform. The principal investigator is expected to visit the relevant website upon the opening of the portal, where he or she will be closely guided on the preparation and final submission of the concept note. All the submitted concept notes are then evaluated by the NRF Screening and Monitoring Committee. The successful concept notes are communicated to proceed to the preparation of full proposals, which are also processed online. PI and at least a member of the research team of an adjudged fundable proposal are invited to defend their proposals before the screening committee. Thereafter, the successful proposals for grant awards are presented to the Board of Trustees of TED Fund for approval.
Now, I guess you can say that Tet Fund sure is thorough in all that it does. And that is a good thing too, because Tet Fund has a sterling track record of success in its intervention. Now, on the 9th of November 2021, Tet Fund inaugurated new committees for both TAG and the NRFS and MC. At the ceremony, the Executive Secretary of Tet Fund, Professor Suleiman Elias Bogoro, hinted that under his watch, research and development has taken its rightful place alongside other intervention areas. The Tet Fund CEO added that a major push since his return to office back in 2016 is the inclusion of private universities and non-state actors as beneficiaries of Tet Fund grants. In crafting the Tet Fund Establishment Act of 2011, the lawmakers decided to insert quote and unquote research and publication in the third place on the list of five mandates with essential fiscal infrastructure for teaching and learning and instructional material and equipment occupying the first two slots. Now, far be it from me to question their wisdom for doing so. But unless you have just landed from another planet, you will undoubtedly be aware by now that today's state fund, under my privileged leadership, has embarked on a paradigm shift that has flipped the list of intervention areas, catapulting research to the top spot in the course of proceedings at this auspicious event today. You will understand why we deem it necessary to elevate R&D to priority position on our list of mandates. As you may be aware, the Ted Fund NRF intervention line was introduced in 2009 as a special intervention program aimed at promoting the conduct of applied research and innovation by academics in public tertiary inst in educational institutions and research institutes. In order to actualize this objective, the Ted Fund Board of Trustees set up the NRF screening, monitoring, a screening and monitoring committee and charge it with the responsibility for implementing and administering the intervention. Following extensive consultation with experts and various stakeholders, the blueprint for rollout was produced. The blueprint mirrors Nigeria's national research agenda. A seed fund of $3 billion was approved by the Board of Trustees in 2011 for the initial takeoff, augmented with a an additional $1 billion in 2015. Upon my statement in 2019, we transformed the NRF into an annual intervention and enlarged the funding envelope to $5 billion Naira. That was 2019, the highest in the history of this intervention. As at the 2020 iteration of the NRF cycle, the figure was increased from 5 billion to 7.5 billion. That is in the year 2020. And as you may be aware, for 2021, the Board of Trustees elevated it to 8.5 billion, and Mr. President, upon recommendation of the Minister of Education, approved it. Although the NRF intervention is targeted at researchers in public, tertiary educational institutions, private universities, from the 2019 uh, year, when we made the case, not only in respect of the increase, I also made the case to the Board of Trustees that we should admit private universities, polytechnics, and colleges of education, as well as the private sector, research institutes, and non-state actors to facilitate the implementation of the higher education book development, special intervention, the Board of Trustees in August 2019 constituted and inaugurated Tat 3 under the chairmanship of Professor Charles Awo to deliver its mandate. Uh, currently, the TAC is charged with the following responsibilities. By the way, uh, let me say this, that we made sure that we wrote letters of appreciation to the defunct committee chairman, 
vice chairmen and members. I believe those of you that have crossed over can confirm this. Um, the chairman of NRF was Professor Bamiro, uh, former vice chancellor, University of Ibadan, a profound scholar of the highest repute and standard. And it's a great pleasure that we have, and of course, Professor Awo, Professor Awo is in that same class. Today we're missing him because he just retired from University of Ibadan and there is uh, a valedictory ceremony in his honor today. Uh, it's, it's, he has asked me to apologize to you. I can tell you, Professor Awo, that you know, he is currently the international president, let me put it that way, the president of the International Food Science and Technology uh, Inst Institute. We are proud to report that the program has transformed our near moribund APCs into vibrant and operational publishing hubs. Uh, I can confirm to you that the uh, printers have all been installed. The APC in the southwest located the University of Lagos has since commenced full operations. We want to commend the Vice Chancellor of University of Lagos for pushing it as uh, very aggressively. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, permit me at this juncture to highlight the fact that at the core of Chapman's paradigm shift mantra is the notion that research should be problem solving with outcomes that make a positive impact on the lives of the citizenry. Tak has recorded a number of laudable achievements and milestones from 2019 to 2021, including 1A, Book Publication Subcommittee, production and presentation of the second edition of the Guidelines for Higher Education Book Development. Two, engagement of over 700 Nigerian scholars from across the nation's tertiary educational institutions in the six geopolitical zones and the FCT, with some from the diaspora and some private sector practitioners as contributing authors, uh, coordinating co uh, yeah, coordinating editors and reviewers to write 43 basic textbooks, introductory textbooks, if you may call them, in diverse subject areas that address local needs and reflect familiar realities and experiences for Nigeria's tertiary education institutions. The day that those ones, those 43 textbooks, calling them the basic textbooks that were brought for approval of uh, management and we sent to the Board of Trustees that approved. It was a milestone in the history of academia in our country. The highest number of textbooks ever produced at a single moment to the credit of the TAC committee. We want to thank you for that. As at the time of this inauguration, 24 manuscripts have been reviewed and are ready for publication also. The, 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 the importance of this is simple. At some point, indigenous, uh, indigenously authored textbooks were almost missing in our bookshops and our libraries. It was so disturbing, and that is why ETF at that time and subsequently Ted Fund decided to institute TAC to go into this area for us to rise from the ashes and correct what we need to correct to be more competitive in the academic community. The presentation of Professor Bogoro was immediately followed by the big moment when the chairman of the Board of Trustees, al Haji Kashim Ibrahim Imam, stepped up to the podium to inaugurate the committees. The chairman said that this move represents a giant leap for Nigeria towards a national rebirth and he was quick to add that the Board of Trustees is redoubling its efforts in improving more research funding. We are Ted Fund. Therefore, we take this assignment that we are entrusting upon you very, very, very serious. We challenge you. It is not enough that we are adequately funding research. We are concerned 
and I speak for the trustees in particular, about the quality of the research, about getting value for the money that we are committing to research, about you spearheading the drive to take this country to the next step. It is a very critical assignment. It is also a very, very important national assignment. On this note, may I congratulate Professor Kundilim the chairman of our National Research Fund Screening and Monitoring Committee, his vice chairman, a renowned professor, Ade Mabogunje of Stanford University, who will be joining us um, visually today, and all the members of the National Research Fund I also equally want to congratulate, on behalf of all the members of the Board of Trustees, Professor Charles Awo, who <laughs> is the chairman of our technical advisory group on national book development. The vice chairman, Professor Metro Array, is here with us and all the members of the Technical Advisory Group. May I, on behalf of all the members of the Board of Trustees, our Executive Secretary in the, in the person of Professor Suleiman Elias Bogro, who is also, is not just the Executive Secretary, but is also a member of the Board of Trustees, the management of um, TED Fund, as well as our entire staff, it's my singular honor and privilege to formally inaugurate the National Research Fund, as well as the um, National, uh, the Technical Advisory Group. Once again, I congratulate you on your most deserving appointment, and I challenge you to rise to the occasion. Thank you, and God bless us all. On behalf of my distinguished chairman, Professor Charles Howe, and indeed all members of TAC, I would like to begin by commending the BOT and the ENES for the foresight in reconstituting this high caliber team of eminent scholars with a very clear mandate. We would like to assure Tedford of our commitment and dedication towards the discharge of this onerous responsibility as we look forward to your continuous support and encouragement. We shall continue to serve as your reliable pillar of support for your responsibility of research and publication. That we can assure you that we shall continue to work assiduously to ensure that we support you in the discharge of this now number one priority mandate of Tedford, research and publication. On behalf of the members of the National Research Fund Screening and Monitoring Committee, I would like to sincerely thank the Board of Trustees under the able chairmanship of Al Haji Kashmir Imam the Executive Secretary of the Tertiary Education Trust Fund for finding us worthy by entrusting us with an assignment that is key to global standing of the Nigerian education system, as well as Nigeria's quest for development and competitive advantage. I would like to assure you all that our committee is aware and alive the role is required to play. The National Research Fund Screening and Monitoring Committee is a key component towards achieving our national research priorities. We therefore recognize and will work in line with their priorities in promoting quality research and development in Nigeria. The committee will diligently perform its responsibilities in line with its terms of reference. With the encouragement that Telephone is giving Nigerian tertiary institutions, 
it is no doubt that applications for the coming year will exceed the 5,814 concept notes that were received in 2020. In doing our work, we will leverage on the instruments already developed by the team led by Professor Bamiro. We shall also be working to strengthen monitoring and evaluation of the research grants. And to actualize this, we are going to work in strengthening the capacity of each member in the area of M&E and research grants. My colleagues in the committee will endeavor to show that no error has been made in nominating us as members of this important team from among the cream of talents across Nigeria and the wider world. Now this was quite the event there. No doubt that with TED Fund interventions, the glory days of Nigerian authors are set to return. This initiative also has the knock-on effect of energizing the Nigerian print industry and creating a vibrant e-book economy. And that is the paradigm shift. Join us again next time. And until then, thank you for stopping by. Good night.